Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to discuss why I switch jobs frequently and why a lot of other people in risk management do as well. So it's pretty common if you look at different profiles for professionals, uh, whether they be you know, 50, 60 years old, all the way down to you know, 22, 23 years old, just starting out in their career. Uh, you'll typically look at their profiles on LinkedIn, you'll see they worked at you know, Bank XYZ for two years or a year, and then they jumped into this other bank for three years, and they went to this other bank for a year, and then they were here for two years. And traditional career advice is, you know, don't jump from place to place. It looks bad, it's not very good. But a lot of senior managers don't understand why this is happening. Um, the reason this is happening is because basically there's a lot of money involved. Uh, it's kind of the secret to everything in life is that there's money involved. So what ends up happening is you take a job and you typically work it for about a year, two years, and then a bunch of recruiters are constantly like mailing you, emailing you and trying to get a hold of you and saying, hey, we have this new job. It's amazing. You know, you work as a model developer or a model validator. You know, we'd love to have somebody just like you. You know, do you want to talk about this position in more details? And so typically people are fairly open. They say, yeah, sure. Like, I'll give it a, a chance. You know, let me know what's going on. And so they talk to you and they say, oh, by the way, you know, this position, you get a title bump, you get a salary increase, and so it's going to be a great advantage for you. And so you look at it and go, wow, you know, I've been working at this company for, you know, like, say, a year and a half. I didn't get a promotion. I didn't get a title bump. I didn't get salary increase. And so now you're looking at this new opportunity like, wow, they're really going to appreciate me. They really care about me. So then you jump from one company to the other company because you make more money. And even when you stay at a company for a year, two, three years, and they give you a little bit of a bump, it's never as much as you get when you switch from job to job. So the thing is, is companies don't pay quants very much, and this results in more or less a high demand for quants, and quants jumping from bank to bank. And so the question is, why would you stay at a bank, be loyal to the bank at the end of the day, when more or less you get paid less than you would have gotten paid, and your title is lower than it would have been if you were to jump from company to company every year? So one of the downsides of this is, A, yeah, it sucks because you have to move a lot. It's hard to stay in one area and go from bank to bank. Living in New York City should be an amazing, great opportunity, besides the fact that it's so expensive to live there. But it's easier to jump from bank to bank because there's a lot of banks, there's a lot of different finance companies that need quants. And more or less, we jump from bank to bank because it's easier to get promotions when you are jumping from company to company. So that being said, for senior management, if you want to keep good employees and good talent, how do you do that? Well, it comes down to culture. So if you're not willing to pay these employees more money every year, and like it needs to be 10, 20% bump, it can't be like, oh, you know, you made X amount of dollars last year, we gave you a $2,000 bump, you know, good, pat on the back, hope you're happy. Like we can jump somewhere else and get a 10 to 20%, if not more, increase in salary just from jumping from a new company. So the key to keeping these employees is culture, company culture. Um, this is hard because typically banks and companies in general, what they do is they try to put everybody on an even playing field. Like, you know, everybody this year got, you know, X amount of bump or they got, you know, a bonus within this range. So we're going to treat quants the same. Well, that's great, but the guys making loans are a dime a dozen. You can go out and find anybody with a general finance degree or an MBA to make those loans. Finding a quant who's really good, really productive, can develop models, validate, or do internal audit or implementation and do it really well and efficiently, that's a little harder to find and there's less of us, so it's more competitive. And so it's crucial that you have a great company culture. Uh, one of these benefits that a lot of us look for is working from home and flexibility. So the rest of your bank has rules like they can't work from home. You probably need to let us work from home and give us more benefits, treat us better because we will just leave within a year or two years. So that company culture really makes it. You know, I worked at one bank. I loved working with everyone there. I really enjoyed all the experiences I had. They gave me interesting work, which was another key part of why I stayed. But at the end of the day, I ended up leaving because my pay bump was so big. And that's kind of the trade-off is culture versus pay. And so that's what senior management needs to understand is you need to go out of your way and try to keep these top talent at your bank because it will benefit you in the long run and it'll probably be a lot cheaper than it will be to try to hire new people consistently and have this rotating workforce. So those are my thoughts on more or less why we jump from job to job. I know this is common in our industry, but banks should be doing a better job at pre like preventing this or making us stay by giving us you know, a better work environment, better culture, and it helps to pay us more so we don't end up having to jump job to job. So those are my thoughts, and as always, thanks for watching.
Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.